Why are you wearing red pants on qualifying day? You'll be sleeping at home? Yeah, definitely. I think it is also the first time that I speak to Arto in English. I put a purple in the red. So uh, here we are with my brother, uh, Arthur. I think it is the first time we get interviewed together. Yeah, it will be quite strange <laughs> to be honest. Shall I start with the first question? You have stepped up to Formula 2 this season. How do you feel in this new category? I feel great. Uh, I mean, uh, it's completely different than Formula 3. So obviously there is more power and it's a calendar as well that is quite challenging because of the street tracks. Now we are going to Melbourne, Baku, Monaco as well. So, uh, so yeah, not easy. Monaco will be special. Charles, what do people who come to Monaco for the first time have to see or visit? I think the Car Museum of the Prince on the harbour. I've got few cars there, so you will be able to uh, see some of my cars. We've got the Palace. I think that's pretty special. And what else? The racetrack. The racetrack, of course, yes. You are going to experience your first Monaco Grand Prix this year. How does that feel? It feels great. I mean, when we were young, we were looking the Grand Prix together with our family. So yeah, to drive there will be uh, quite uh, quite good. It's a, it's a dream coming true. So you'll be sleeping at home. Yeah, definitely. Well, that's that's gonna going to be weird. You will see. So, what is the best memory since you started racing in F1? Monza, 2019. The win was was crazy. Lots of pressure from Lewis and and Valtteri during the whole race, but we managed to bring it home. He wins in Monza. It was a very, very special weekend, so um, Monza 2019 for sure. I remember we were shaking the grandstand with uh, Lorenzo. But and... well, my mother was in the grandstand. You were in the paddock? In the paddock, yeah. But uh, we didn't have passed off for my nope, mother. So she was, uh, she was in the grandstand, but she really enjoyed it, actually. So why are you wearing red pants on the circuit on qualifying day? It's true. It's true. There are no real reasons. I don't know. One day I've done it, quality went well. I liked the red man, <laughs> so uh, I was just like, let's keep it like that. And since that day, I don't think I ever did a Saturday without the quali red pants. You do the same with the underwear or? No, I don't. <laughs> I put the purple in the red. <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite sector of the circuit? You have never driven on that track. I never drove in that track, but uh, I would say sector three uh, because you, you pass really close to the wall. It's a really technical section. I don't know exactly where it's starting sector three yet because I didn't do it in the sim. I asked it as the wrong person. Oh, okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so bad with sectors, so I don't exactly know. But I know it's around the swimming pool, which is my favorite area. So yeah. I always say sector three too. If you weren't a driver, what would you have become? Uh, a musician. <laughs> no, I should say a musician. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, uh, I. I Probably will have tried to be an architect. I love architecture. Um, yeah. You need a song already. I didn't. Th I did. <laughs> what is your biggest dream as a driver? Well, obviously, it's to, to reach Formula One. I mean, uh, that's my biggest dream. That's what you see at the end of the picture. But uh, obviously, it's not something you should focus to, to reach it. There is a lot of steps before. I mean, you know how it is. So. <laughs> what does Scuderia Ferrari mean for you? Everything. In my career, uh, my dream was also to become a Formula One driver. And then the next dream is to be a Ferrari driver. And then the next step is to win a world championship with Ferrari. But uh, Ferrari is extremely special to me. I guess like you, they are the people that give us the opportunity to do what we love. So uh, it means a lot, apart from all the history that there is behind the team that everybody knows. And uh, for me, it's just the best team. And I'm extremely happy to be while driving for them. What are your hobbies? outside of racing? Uh, playing piano, playing simulator, kind of related to the racing. Now I watch tennis, I, w I really w well, want to start tennis actually. When you watch it, it it's makes easy. you want to play because it looks easy, but then you play and it's actually quite difficult. For people who don't know you, how would you describe your driving style? I know that I like to push the entries, so I like to push. For you, it's quite tricky because from one year, I mean, every year nearly, you change category, yeah. so it's a different car, you need to adapt and, and have a different driving style. When you were a child, could you imagine yourself become a Formula One driver one day? I was dreaming of being a Formula One driver, but imagining is another thing. Like, I was dreaming, I, I wanted to do that, that was clear for me, but uh, our father, I think, always told us 
how difficult it will be to reach there. So I, I knew it, we knew it, and I don't think we had that in mind all the time. We, we thought that it was nearly unreachable, but we always work for it. So uh, I was a Ferrari Driver Academy member before I reached Formula One. What's the best part of the experience for you? Everything around Ferrari. I mean, like you said, it's huge support from everywhere. Everything, you see the Formula One team, you see the engineers, you see the drivers as well. Well, I see you a bit more then, so. <laughs> but uh, no, I think it's, uh, it's really big help. As well, the support they give you, uh, you can talk to the engineers that is working in Formula One, so you have a look about what they are doing on track and uh, simulator, and yes, simulator, and yes, some physical training. Yeah. How would you explain the challenge of the Monaco circuits to someone who is new to F1? In Monaco, you are always in a corner because it's corner after corner, so you, your mind is a little bit like in the karting days where you just don't have time to think. And obviously there are no rooms for mistakes, so a lot of uh, adrenaline. The approach for the weekend is quite different. You need to go step by step because whenever you overstep the limit, you finish in the wall. But it is probably my favorite weekend of the year. You all experience for the first time and you all absolutely love it, I'm sure. Yeah. Which moment of your career have you enjoyed the most so far? I would say Formula, Formula 3, I think. Uh, I think it was the win in uh, in uh, Silverstone. Yeah, I mean, actually, it was a really hard win. So, uh, yeah, I remember that I was protecting all race long. I was struggling quite a lot to keep the tires uh, in the right uh, window. And, uh, and yeah, it was a really tricky one. Actually, all the really tricky races that I, I won was the, the best memory because when you cross the finish line, yeah, it's... Uh, With the adrenaline yeah, and stuff. I guess so it is the same for Monza. Yeah. What does a driver need to become a world champion? Well, I'm not a world champion yet. Uh, I can tell you what I think he needs to become a world champion. Uh, but uh, basically, the dedication, I think this is always really important to always push uh, no matter what the situation you are in. Sometimes you've got more difficult races and in those difficult races, you need to take points. Uh, to keep pushing in those days is extremely important. Do you have another question? How does it feel to hear the Monegas Anthem being played when you're in the podium? Oh, it feels really good. Well, I think we feel proud whenever there's the Monegas Anthem because whenever we hear it on a Formula One weekend, it's either Arthur or myself. So it's always a good sign. It is very special because at the end, it's a very small country. We all know each other. We are always proud. Thank you, guys. Good luck for your <laughs> Ciao.